Good morning. Here's a quick hexi quilt update. I am on row seven. Very exciting. So today we are talking about breakthroughs and how we can hopefully create conditions that are conditions and guidelines that are conducive to a breakthrough. So for context, I had a massive, what I would call a massive creative breakthrough on Friday, within an hour of recording that video called uh, Influence and Indifference. And I think that that, it was specifically what I said about calibration that with, with this hand motion that, uh, that was like the final piece and like everything fell into place. And the other thing that set me up was my sister telling me at dinner the night before about this artist, you know, the New York Times is doing that series of obituaries on, you know, great artists, luminaries, you know, political figures, whoever, who should have received eulogies in the paper back when they actually passed away. And so one of these artists was Janet Sobel, who was, who was doing the Jackson Pollock thing, like number one, before Jackson Pollock, number two, better than Jackson Pollock in my humble opinion. And also he publicly acknowledged her influence. So, you know, she did it first, she did it better. And I was so inspired by her lack of, well, number one, coming late to the game because she started painting in her mid forties. Number two, completely self-taught. And so she was always on the fringes of the movement, even though she ought to have been a major figure at the time. So that was tremendously inspiring to me because there is that voice that says like, well, you're 40 now, like if, you know, the die is cast. So if there were other avenues, other creative avenues that you'd like to explore, it might be too late. I don't really believe that, but there is that annoying voice. So I felt like hearing about my sister telling me about Janet Sobel gave me permission in a, in a way. So yeah, okay, so that's, that's the context. Not gonna tell you what the actual creative breakthrough was. You will find out in about three years time. <laughs> but uh, I've tried to reverse engineer some, some guidelines here. So let's see if any of these are helpful for you. I really, really hope that they are, so let's go. Um, number one. Gather everything you are most obsessed with. All of the elements, the methods, the philosophies, everything that, you know, the first time you encountered a new philosophy or a new method, an image, whatever it is, a theme, everything lit up. And you were just out of your mind excited about it, right? So gather all of those elements and let go of elements that you were enchanted with for a while. Maybe you still are, but you have ambivalent feelings. Um, it's, it's intuitively, it's something that you know, or maybe it's something that you feel like you should be working with or around, like it makes sense to. So let me give you an example of this. I, I have lots of ideas that I want someone else to seize and run with because it's just, I just intuitively know that it's not an idea that I'm supposed to run with and implement. So one example is uh, a few years ago, I was at the Squam Art Fair reading, uh, looking at, a, at an art, or a, a craft magazine, and it was this beautifully produced magazine with knitting patterns, embroidery patterns, and recipes. 
and I noticed that there was a salad recipe that had like, you know, sliced pig muscle in it. And I was so disgusted and I was like, ah, this whole like creative folks not understanding all of the ways that, you know, all of our habits and our ingrained ways of thinking that are actually so destructive, like not making that connection is so frustrating for me. I wrote a whole book about it. And so I thought, you know, someone should make a, a vegan crafting magazine in this particular, like I know people have done, have done work in this, in this general area, but I was saying specifically this style, this like really like lush, you know, Squam Art Workshops style magazine. It, what, it's, it's not a Squam Art Workshops production. I, I actually forget the name of the magazine because um, I haven't looked at it since because I was so ticked off. So I thought, you know, because it is, it looks like all the marriage of, of interest for me, right? But the, it's just not, I want someone else to do it. I want someone else to create this magazine so that I can purchase a subscription and enjoy it and knit out of it, you know, with my hemp yarn, etc. So that's just one example. I have I have plenty of others. So and over time, you you'll recognize like what is the idea that that is you know it's like my pilot light is like you know yes this this this, and then there are the other ideas. It's like yeah. You see the difference? Uh, so, I, and this reminds me of that thing that they say about having achievements in life and, you know, also personal achievements. Like if you want to, you know, um, have domestic contentment, well, you know, you can't, you have to make a commitment at some point, right? Like if you want to have the things, you have to eliminate some other options along the way in order to, you know, not become someone who is resolutely not making choices and then their life is an unfortunate reflection of that decision not to make, the decision not to decide. Um, and so it's the same thing as it is in your personal life and, you know, with your day job and everything. You have to, like, choose a major <laughs> in your creative work as well, your, your own, like, life purpose creative work as well and so another example is you know I finally free cycled my guitar after years of thinking that I was going to pick it up again I'm not a musician I'm never going to be a musician and that's okay I can't do everything in one lifetime so okay so number one gather everything you're obsessed with you know let go of the rest um, and then the second point is to clear space in your brain for all of these elements to interact with each other over time. And the other thing I should have said was that, that the more disparate, the more unrelated all of those elements are, the better. Because as I say in the Bright Idea Kit, original ideas arise out of com completely unexpected combinations of ideas. Basically, this video is like a condensed version of that course, which you will find at cometparty.teachable.com. So you're clearing space in your brain for all of those inter elements to interact with one another over time. So you're creating space and you're making an invitation. You're inviting all of those elements to interact in this you know, commodious, magical space inside your head. And you also have the expectation that the elements that need to come together and create that spark, that it's going to happen eventually. The key word is eventually, because number three, is to cultivate patience, which I tell myself every day, patience is a superpower. And it is something that we can cultivate. So here's the thing. You don't want to be the artist who receives a divine download of their big picture life purpose work at the age of 20. I didn't, I mean, I'm glad that I didn't peak 
early. <laughs> Big picture life purpose work is something that has to amass itself and develop mostly in private over a period of years and years and years and years. So let's not sit down the open notebook, open sketchbook, and say to ourselves, today is the day that I break through and I figure all of it out. That's not gonna happen. That's like a surefire way to like build the wall even higher between you and this big marvelous thing on the other side of the wall that you're just like, I just, it's on the tip of my tongue. Time, 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 time. Patience, patience, patience. Uh, the other, the other thing is to recognize stepping stone ideas, which I should have said during part one. Some ideas seem great, viable, actionable, destined ideas that are destined for you. And then, you know, days, weeks, months, years later, you get like the next iteration of that idea, which could be not similar at all, but you needed that stepping stone idea to get to the idea that you're actually going to execute. So, and then, so, you know, training yourself not to see the stepping stone ideas as failures, as, as, you know, ideas, they were necessary, they're important and they were viable in the sense that they got you to where you ultimately needed, wanted to go. And the final point is to, develop a really, really, really clear sense of who in your circle, professionally and personally, who in your circle is going to support you 100% and then within those really good, kind, supportive loved ones and colleagues, figure out you know, divide them up further into which friends are going to get your bonkers ideas, like the, the friends that you can share the bonkers ideas with. And then the, you have to also, you know, the other category is the friends and colleagues and loved ones who will support you, though they might not understand the bonkers idea. And I'm making this extra distinction because for me right now, I am choosing not to share my bonkers idea, my big creative breakthrough, with my colleagues and loved ones who are not gonna get it. And until I have my feet under me and I feel like I'm, I'm on stable ground, I've developed the idea to the point where I can speak about it in an eloquent way and people will understand it and people will understand why I came up with this idea. And then you've got the people who, you know, if you're not lucky enough to have supportive parents, like, you know, maybe your, you know, your dad or your mom or your grandma is just, you know, always poo-pooing your ideas under the guise of like, you know, being realistic. So, you know, obviously don't, don't share your ideas with the folks who are, however unintentionally trying to take a poop on your dreams, right? So, so this is this is what I'm talking about with um, my with my sister. We are able to have these conversations, and she says things that spark my, you know, spark spark the 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 connections between the elements, and so I might not tell my sister everything that is you know, the, con the whole contents of the creative breakthrough right now, I will, you know, a few weeks or a few months from now, once it's solidified and I have developed it, I have a plan, but you need those both kinds of supportive folks in your life. Um, even, and, and, and you know, you need to be really, really discerning about who you are going to share the bonkers idea with. Um, and maybe it's one person, maybe it's no one right now. Uh, and that's that's okay. Years ago, I had a college writing buddy, and I would always talk about the Amy Tan vow of silence because Amy Amy Tan had been inter, you know interviewed during you know the Joy Luck Club 
coming out, movie coming out and everything, and she was saying that she does not share what she's working on with anyone for a good while. And I think it's always better to err on the side of holding your most beloved ideas and, and collections of elements Keep them close to your vest unless your intuition is telling you to share. So that is my recipe for a breakthrough. I hope that something I've said has been useful for you. Again, if you want more of this kind of content, check out the Bright Idea Kit. There are um, some preview bits, some resources that you can get for free. You don't have to purchase the the course. So check that out. It's at cometparty.teachable.com. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have a bunch of questions to last us the next few weeks from Megan. So a special shout out to Megan. Asked me a lot of great questions. So I think we're going to be doing some character development uh, tips next week. So I'm excited for that. So let me know um, how, what you think and how you feel about this concept of laying the laying down the conditions for that are conducive for a creative breakthrough. Tell me about some creative breakthroughs that you've had in the past, and you know what what were the 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 things that sparked you know the, the catalysts for those creative breakthroughs. I'd love to continue this conversation in the comments as usual. So thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day, evening, night, morning, whatever time it is, whenever you're watching this. Have a good one.